All right, Jeff Will coming to you once again. And this was the example uh, that had the job to be done, label the lines with the values. Now, yes, we could spend a lot of time labeling all of the values here, but we have a curious animal here, and he is going to want to help us with, uh, want to help us. Let's see, there he is. He's going to help us here today, okay? And one of the things is that I've tried to study computer architecture quite a bit, but uh, we have a Manchester Terrier who is super, super good at labeling lines. Okay, so I've highlighted just a fraction of these. Now, one of the things that we note is that the load word instruction, this load word instruction, is stored at 0x1c in instruction memory. Okay? So that means contained within this PC must be, let me get this down a little bit more, contained within this PC must be the address of the instruction that we're working on. So that is going to have to be 0x0000000 1c. Now, I want to make sure to note that. Okay, well, uh, Bing's had enough computer architecture for one day. All right, so now when 01c goes through the add for mux, it now gets added for to it. So that's going to be 0020, okay? And that 0020, if we look, is going to come through, because we're not branching or anything, is going to come through here. So if I wanted to, um, I know that that is also going to be you know, x 0000020. All right, that's all dealing with the PC. Now the next, we look at the OR instruction. That OR instruction is gonna be three, three, uh, gonna go into three. It's going to have arguments three and 16. This is gonna be RS, three is gonna, this R, this three, gonna be RS, and this three is gonna be RD. Okay, so that means that there's going to be a 3 coming through here. That's 5 bits. There's going to be a 16 coming here. Okay. And oh, we don't have these marked here, but this is going to be 3,000. It's going to be the contents of 3. And this is going to be 16,000. Okay. But... We need to put the brakes on this. Why? These do not come from the register fetch instruction. They actually come from this. So those are the right back lines. As a matter of fact, the highlighted line here actually connects to the right register. Let's go ahead and highlight that, uh, the right data. Okay, so that's actually gonna go back all the way here, and we see that if we get one, we get the other, because this is the exact same, um, exact same value. Okay, well, since we got it here, we're gonna OR 8, 0, and 25. Now, the value in 25 would have been 25,000, And this is going to be zero. Were we to have anded them together, we'd get zero. But since we're oring them together, we get 25,000. And as a reminder, mem to reg would have been a zero here. 
to make sure that we pass through the answer. So this is going to be 25,000. And that means we follow that all the way back here. And what we want is that the right data to be the answer from the right back phase. And the pencil lead is just going crazy here. So 25,000 is right there. Now what register do we write it to? Well, we have to come back here. And the right register is going to be 8, which means if we were to have marked this, that's the destination register, which is going to be 8. And I always like to remember that that's a 5-bit signal. So we want to write 25,000 to register 8. Okay? The key thing to note here, I'm going to pull out a blue pen, is that these two values come from the right back stage. They do not come from the EX phase. These values, and I don't have another colorful pen, so I'll use black. These values here and these values come from the register fetch instruction. All right. So, oh, and I just got handed a cool purple pen from my daughter. So this is going to be red. Okay? These are also going to be register fetch. Okay? So don't be fooled. These, although they're physically in the register fetch stage, actually come from the right back phase. All right. Now we've got the store word instruction. I'm going to back this up a little bit. Okay, we got the store word instruction. Well, if we have the store word instruction, we could slip through the output of the register file. But no, we want the sign extended immediate. That's going to be a 32-bit number. Okay, that's 32 bits here. And remember, it peels off the funct field. But up here, it's still a 32-bit number. And... We actually want the sign extended immediate, okay? Want the sign extended immediate added to the register that we fetched. Why? Because then this ALU result is going to be the address to which we write. Again, that's a 32 bit number, okay? So ALU source here is going to have to be a 1. Okay, I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit. All right. Now, here we have one of those quandaries. Do we pass through um, the RT or the RD field here? And that's the lowercase RT and the lowercase RD. Well, since we're not writing back, it doesn't really matter. It's a don't care. But I'm going to say that since the RD field doesn't exist in an I-type instruction, we're going to pass through the RT field, and the RT field is going to be 9. So this is kind of ambiguous, but I'm a tricky guy. Now, the ALU control, what do we want it to do? I put add here, but this is actually address. I want to distinguish that between the addition and the address. So that'll be the address. What do we do for the address? Well, we want this thing to say, hey, ALU, you go ahead and use the add instruction. So the add instruction there is going to be a 0, 1, 0. Okay? And ALU op is going to be a 0, 0. Why? 0, 0 indicates, hey, it's a memory instruction. So if the ALU control takes in a 0, 0, regardless of the funct field, then this is always going to want to add to calculate the address. We want to add, and therefore, the 3-bit code uh, to the ALU is going to be 010. Okay. And then, in here, the only thing I've marked here is what are we going to do with the memory? Well, with an add instruction, how you solve a problem like add, well... We can't catch a cloud and pin it down, but the data memories... Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on. Allie, come here. You might have heard a microwave running, so let's see what we got going on. Um, looks like we've got 
some sweet potatoes, those came from yesterday, some applesauce, and then this is sausage, and then a bunch of fruit on rice, okay? Now, I love sausage, I love rice, but then in this dish that keeps being made by my family, there's all sorts of fruit. Now, I'll stand pineapple with ham, but I will not abide just a mixture of fruit with meat. Um, it's not some sort of uh, amalgamation of uh, two different tastes that seem to taste great together, but in fact, they don't. So if this is nice and hot, and did you heat up the applesauce or did you put it over the later? Yeah, you don't, some people like hot applesauce. Not me, not Allie. Red Here you go. Aren't fruit, are they? Uh, red peppers uh, are, as my wife asked, red peppers are a vegetable, and I thought that was quite clear. <laughs> All right, so we're not doing anything with the data memory, so this is going to be a zero. That's going to be a zero, essentially shutting off the data memory. Okay, well, let's pop in some others as a freebie. Branch is actually going to be zero. Why? Because this isn't a branch instruction. Now, this is the zero line, and uh, we're gonna and together one and 30, so the zero is not zero, so this is going to be a zero. I always love that little um, deal. Uh, it's not zero, so the zero line is zero. Anyway, even if the, it were zero, the branch would output a zero here so that we don't take the branch target. Um, all right, destination register. Well, the destination register would be zero. Uh, I'm looking for some low hanging fruit here. Um, this here would be the result of 1,000 and 1,000 base 10 ended with 30,000 base 10. You'd have to calculate that into hexadecimal and then do the bitwise operation. Enough for now. Take care.